Hello everyone, this is Jyoti Kathi from ENC department, BGMIT, Madhu. We'll see the next experiment on the DSP lab, that is circular convolution of two given sequences. Then we have to verify commutative, distributive and associative property of circular convolution. The aim of this experiment is you have to write the Scilab code for doing the circular convolution of two given sequences, then you have to verify the three properties. Those are commutative, distributive and the associative properties. Okay. Then this circular convolution is nothing but it is a cyclic convolution. In linear convolution, the uh, signals or sequences are linearly shifting, whereas in circular convolution, the values will be shifted circularly. Okay, that is the only difference. The formulas will be same as I explained in the linear convolution. Okay, next we'll go to the programming part directly here. See, this is the program for circular convolution of two given sequences. First, I will do the circular convolution of two given sequences. Then I will verify the properties. Okay, here I have done the different method. In the linear convolution, what I have done? Linear convolution I have done in uh, time domain axis. Okay. Uh, in order to show in a frequency domain, I will do the circular convolution. Here I have done the circular convolution in the frequency domain axis. Whereas in linear convolution, I use the time domain axis. Okay, see here, as you are knowing, the first starting two instructions will be clear, that is CLC clear and close. CLC will clear the previously executed instructions. Clear will close all, uh, clear, it will clear all the variables which are previously used by other programs. Then close will uh, close all the figure windows, those are previously executed. Okay, for every program, we'll do this three instructions first. Next, here directly I have taken L is equal to 4. That means the length of sequence I have taken, any sequence I have taken as the length as 4. You can vary this well. Then N I have taken as 4. That means I want to calculate here the 4 point DFT. Okay, first sequence X1 is equal to first sequence you have to enter input enter the first discrete sequence x1 of n first sequence are taken as x1 of n then x2 is equal to input enter the second discrete sequence x2 of n okay here i'll enter the second uh, discrete signal x2 of n then similarly the third sequence we require two signals to compute the circular convolution of those two sequence then third signal we require for calculating the uh, that is for verifying the properties. Therefore, I have taken here three signals, x1, x2, and x3. Next, what I will do, as you are knowing, the circular convolution in frequency, uh, in time domain is equivalent to what? Multiplication of its DFTs in frequency domain. Therefore, we are, I am using here the frequency domain scale. That means I am doing the multiplication of whatever the DFT values you got. Okay, in frequency domain I am doing. Therefore, first what I will do, I will calculate the FFT of X of N sequence. That means FFT is nothing but the DFT operation. Here FFT is a predefined function. It will calculate the DFT of the first sequence X1. Therefore, X1 of K I have taken. That is X1 of K is the DFT of X of K, X1. Okay, it will calculate the DFT of X1. Similarly, X2 of K, that is, it will calculate the DFT of X2. Similarly, X3 is equal to DFT of X3. That is, FFT is the predefined function used. Okay, in these three steps, what you have done, we have calculated the FFT for X1, X2, X3. That is nothing but DFT for X1, X2 and X3. Okay, next I will do the multiplication of two DFTs. Since I have taken X1 and X2, two signals, I will calculate the circular convolution of X1 and X2 first. Then I will verify the 
properties using X3 signal. Okay, first I'll do the multiplication of two DFTs. That is X1 of K DFT and X2 of T DFT. Okay, X1 of K dot star X2 of K. Okay, it is a vector multiplication. Then after multiplying whatever the value you'll get, that will be stored in X4 of K. Okay, next is what I have taken small x of 4 is equal to f of t of x of k. That means what it will do. Here I have taken capital. That means it is the uh, DFT value, frequency domain value. Here x small x of 4 means it will calculate IDFT of x of 4. Okay, here for DFT and IDFT we will use the same predefined function f of t only but the input value is what you are taken that depends on whether it is DFT or IDFT. Okay, here if we are using the DFT values, then it will calculate IDFT. Here, if we are using the FF, that is IDFT values or whatever the time domain axis values, then it will calculate the DFT values depending on the given input signal. Since we have already calculated the, the DFT values, here small x of 4, it will calculate the IDFT of x of 4. Then we'll take the real values of x of 4. Only real values you'll consider. And you will get the real values only. After calculating IDFT, you'll get the real values that will again stored in a x of 4. Okay, what you have done? x of 1 and x of 2, you have calculated the DFTs of x of 1 and x of 2. Then those DFTs are multiplied. Multiplied after multiplication, I have taken the IDFT of that. Okay. Then you will get the circular convolution for the given two input signal x1 and x2 signal circular convolution is nothing but this small x of 4. Okay, then this small x of 4 is varying from n small n is equal to 1 to n. Here 1 n I have taken as previously only n I have taken as 4. Therefore, small n is varying from 1 to 4. Here if input sequences are having four samples, the output sequence is also having four samples only because it is a circular convolution. It is not a linear convolution. Then, then you have to plot the graph for x1, x2 and the circularly convolved signal, okay, x4. Therefore, subplot of 3, 1, 1, here also I will take three rows and one column. This indicates the first figure that is for x1 it will plot for x1 then you have to label x label y label and the, you have to give the title for that similarly you have to do it for the second signals that is x of 2 subplot of 3 comma 1 comma 2 okay you have to give second signal is x2 x label y label and title for that then the third diagram indicates the output that is circularly convolved signal x of 4 for that x label y label and the title first figure is for input x1 second figure is for x2 and the last figure third figure is for the output that is circularly convolved signal x of 4 okay after drawing this we need to verify the properties associative distributive and the commutative property okay here i have written the the code for these properties Okay, already you are knowing in the linear convolution, what is committed to associative and a distributive property. Depending on that only, I have written the code for this. First, I have verified the commutative property. Okay, commutative property is what? Commutative property is X of N convolved with X1 of N convolved with X2 of N that should be equal to x2 of n convolved with x1 of n. This is committed to property. Okay, in the convolution I have taken in time domain. In frequency domain, what it will be? In frequency domain, x1 of k multiplied with x2 of k, that is equal to x2 of k multiplied with x1 of k. Okay, therefore I have done here the first part as committed to property okay 
uh, I have multiplied previously only you have multiplied x1 and x2 x1 and x2 convolution you got it circular convolution here okay then I have done here x5 of k as that is x2 of n convolved with x1 therefore x2 of k with x1 of k multiplication then I have taken uh, frequency domain if it is after multiplication you will get in a value in frequency domain now if I want the values in time domain that's why I have taken in IDFT of x5 of k then we have taken the real values of x of k then we are verified whether x of 4 is equal to x of 5 that means this is your x of 4 you have already calculated that is circular convolution of x x1 with x2 that is x4 then you need to compare that with x5 x5 is this RHS part x2 convolved with x1 if these two are equal if x4 is equal to x5 then the commutative property is verified okay otherwise the commutative property is not verified you can uh, you can write here one more sentence also else display commutative property not verified as i have done in the linear convolution okay then similarly you have to verify for associative property okay this part is this part of the program is for associative property that is what x1 of n convolved with x2 of n this whole thing should be convolved with x3 of n third signal whatever signal is there this should be equal to what x1 of n is convolved with x2 of n convolved with x3 of n if this LHS part is equal to RHS then your associative property is verified here I have given the formula for in time domain excess in the frequency domain similarly you'll get x1 of k multiplied with x2 of k this whole thing is multiplied with x3 of k similarly in the RHS part x1 of k okay that is multiplied by the x2 of k multiplied with x3 of k then after multiplying x2 is x3 whatever the signal you'll get that should be multiplied with x1 of k then in this if LHS part is equal to RHS that is x of 6 is equal to x of 8 then the associative property is verified here I have given different variable names but the same process according to this formula only I have calculated here but in the frequency domain first I multiplied frequency domain then I have taken its IDFT okay in time domain you'll get then you'll compare those values if the value is verified that is if x6 is equal to x8 then you'll associative property verified otherwise you display here as associative property not verified as you are done in linear convolution okay similarly we'll do for distributive property also okay the same formula as you have used in the linear pro, uh, linear convolution properties that is linear convolution programming part what is that the formula for distributive property is x so x1 of n convolved with the addition of x2 of n with x3 of n this is your LHS part this should be equal to x1 of n convolved with x2 of n plus x1 of n convolved with x3 of n this is in time domain similarly how to verify for frequency domain okay this is for frequency domain samples Okay, then if this LHS part is equal to RHS part then the distributive property is verified otherwise if LHS is not equal to RHS then the distributive property will not hold good that means here if x of 9 is equal to x of 11 the same uh, formula I have verified here okay if x of 9 is equal to x of 11 then the distributive property is verified otherwise it will not be verified okay 
next we'll see how it will be executed okay this is about circular convolution then we are verified circular convolution of two signals x1 and x2 then we are verified the uh, three properties associative distributive and the committed to property we'll execute this program click on the execute button click on s then in another window we need to enter the values okay enter the first discrete signals any value you can take suppose i will take 1 2 3 4 only the same values only first discrete sequence then second discrete signals 1 2 3 1 okay second sequence the third sequence i'll take it as 1 2 4 3 any value you can take then press enter see you got the circular convolution of x1 and x2 circular convolution of two signals x1 and x2 signals circular convolution is 9 20 19 14 and 70 okay whatever the values you got you can verify this with the uh, theoretical values you do the theoretical calculation verify the values then with the x3 signal we are verified the commutative associative and the distributive property if that property holds good only then it's this sentence will be displayed otherwise it will display commutative property not verified here it is verified therefore it is displaying commutative property verified associative property verified similarly distributive property verified next we'll see how the graph is displayed here Okay, this is the graph for committed, uh, that is con circular convolution. Input sequence is x1 at i given 1, 2, 3, 4. The out, uh, that is another input sequence x2 of n is 1, 2, 3, 1 I have given. Therefore, 1, 2, 3 and 1 because the starting y-axis value is 1. Next, the output sequence that is circularly convolved sequence x4 of n is equal to Okay, whatever the values you got here you got the values as you got the values as 20 19 14 and 17 20 19 14 and 17 the same values will be displayed in the figure window also okay first one is 20 next is this 19 next is 14 here the y-axis will start at 14 next will is 70 okay this is the graph for input x1 x2 and this is the output that is circularly convolved sequence three graphs three rows and one column first figure x1 second figure x2 third figure the output that is circularly convolved this is about the circular convolution of two sequence and verification of the properties distributive commutative and the associative property thank you